Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is Physics Chapter 3, Vectors, Video 7. Today's topic is Relative Velocity and Riverboat Problems. The objectives for today is to be able to determine relative velocity in two-dimensional problems. Let's review relative velocity in one dimension. So remember, velocity is relative to the observer. If two objects travel toward each other, to the observer car A or car B, the relative velocity is the sum of two velocities. So car A, in this case, will travel at 40 meters per second relative to car B. It will meet car B in 10 seconds. Now, if the two objects travel in the same direction, now to the observer car A or car B, the relative velocity is the difference between the two velocities. So in this case, car A will travel at 10 meters per second relative to car B. It will catch car B in 40 seconds. The plane in the wind. This is two-dimensional problem. If the plane is flying at 100 kilometers per hour relative to the air, and the airspeed, which is the wind, is 25 kilometers per hour relative to Earth, then what is the resultant airplane speed relative to Earth? As you can see from this animation, with a tailwind, the plane speed is going to be greater. With headwind, the plane speed is going to be less. With crosswind, the plane speed is still going to be greater, but kind of in the middle. This is actually a vector addition. So when, for the crosswind, we can use Pythagorean theorem. So to the observer on Earth, tailwind will speed up the airplane. V equals to 100 plus 25, which gives you 125 kilometers per hour. With a headwind, the plane speed will be smaller. Its resultant is 100 minus 25, which gives you 75 kilometers per hour. With crosswind, we can use Pythagorean theorem. We use 25 squared plus 100 squared, which gives us 103 kilometers per hour, which is a little bit faster than the plane speed relative to air. We can also use inverse tan to find the direction of the plane. So the plane speed is greater to the observer than the plane speed relative to air. The riverboat problems is very similar to airplane problems. So the resultant, we have to use Pythagorean theorem to add the boat's velocity relative to the water plus water's uh, velocity relative to Earth, which is current's velocity. The boat's speed relative to the water stays the same regardless if there is current or not, but the boat's speed relative to the observer on the shore is greater due to current. So if there is a current, we to the observer on Earth, we see the boat seems travels faster, which it is traveling faster. However, both boats arrive at a shore in the same time. It's just the, the downstream. So in the steel current, there is no downstream displacement. So motorboat problems such as this are typically accompanied by three separate questions. One, what is the resultant velocity, both magnitude and direction of the boat? Two, if the width of the river is x meters wide, then how much time does it take the boat to travel shore to shore? And three, what distance downstream does the boat reach the opposite shore? Let's take a look at this example. Suppose that the river was moving with a velocity of 3 meters per second north, and the motorboat was moving with a velocity of 4 meters per second east. We can draw a vector diagram looks like this. So 4 meters per second east, 3 meters per second north. The blue, that's a resultant. Question number one, what is the resultant? Velocity. So this we can use Pythagorean theorem. This is 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the resultant is 5 meters per second. And to find the angle, we use um, inverse 10 of 3 divided by 4. Question number two, if the width of the river is 500 meters wide, then how much time does it take the boat to travel shore to shore? So we know this equation, V equals D over T, so we can derive T equals D over V. Remember V and T, this two can be switched. However, D and V must be in the same direction. Now we have three Vs, right? We have three going up, four going to east, then we have a blue the resultant, so which V should we use? Rule is D and V must be in the same direction. So which one do we use? We have to see which dimension are we giving 500. So 500 is the width of the river. So 500 is in the same direction as 4 meters per second. 
So four meters per second is the velocity we must use. We have the time 125 seconds. Next one, what distance downstream does the boat reach the opposite shore? So in from here, we can find D equals V times T. So D and V again must be in the same direction. D is down the shore, down the shore is this way. Okay, down the shore is this way. So we must use this vertical velocity, which vertical velocity is three meters per second times time. We have 375 meters. Another example, a swimmer moving at 0.5 meters per second swims across a 200 meter wide steel river. How long will it take the swimmer to get across? So T equals D over V. Here is D 200, V is 0 0.5. 200 divided by 0 0.5, you have 400 seconds. Now, as the swim, swimmer across the river, the current pushes him downstream at 0 0.1 meters. So instead of going right across, he is going to end up downstream. Again, how long does it take the swimmer to get across? So remember T equals D over V, but D and V must be in the same direction since swimmer's speed relative to water still is, is still 0.5. So the time reach the uh, other side is still 400 seconds. We still use 200 divided by 0.5. So time to cross is unaffected by current. The swimmer still arrive on the other bank in the same time, 400 seconds. What is the difference? The difference is where the swimmer going to land. In still water is right across. In the in a flowing river, it will come downward. The arrival point will be shifted downstream. Independence of perpendicular components of motion. So in the riverboat, airplane, or swimmer problem, the resultant velocity is obtained by adding perpendicular components using Pythagorean theorem. These perpendicular components are independent of each other. What does that mean? That means if one changes, the other is not affected at all. For, for example, the swim the swimmer across the river, right, with with uh, a time 0.5 meters per second. So he will cross the river in a certain amount of time. That time is not going to be affected by river's current at all. So the river's current is not going to affect his time to cross the river. If he wants to decrease his time, he must increase his speed relative to the river. Let's take a look at another example. A riverboat has east on river which flows north. The riverboat is moving at 5 meters per second with respect to the water and water moves north with respect to the shore at a speed of 3.6 meters per second. Again, the question is, determine the resultant velocity of the riverboat. That means both magnitude and the direction. So we use the Pythagorean theorem to find magnitude. We use inverse tan to find a direction. It's 35 degrees north of east because you measured from east. You're going to the north. Next question, if the river is 71 meters wide, determine the time for the boat to cross the river. So 71 meters wide, that's in this direction, the speed of 5.1 meters per second. So we use D over V, this two must be in the same direction. So we have 13.9 seconds. Next one, determine the distance that a boat will travel downstream. The boat travels downstream is in the vertical direction, in the north. So we must use the V in the vertical direction, which is 3.6 meters per second which gives you 50 meters. Next one, for the boat heading straight across the river, does the speed at which the river flows affects the time required for the boat across the river? The answer is no. Why not? Because perpendicular components are independent of each other. That means the boat is going across the river with the same time. Doesn't matter what's the speed of the current. The speed of the current can be zero. The boat will cross with 13.9 seconds. The speed of river can be 100 meters. The boat will cross with 13.9 seconds. Another example, a waterfall is located 45 meters downstream from where the boat is launched. So over here, this vertical is 45 meters. We know the current speed in this direction is 3 meters per second. 
what is the minimum boat speed required to cross the 100 meter wide river before fall, falling over the fall because we want a boat to travel faster so it, the downstream uh, distance will be smaller, doesn't reach to the waterfall. So what is the minimum time uh, speed? I mean, first we have to find the time. So the time equals D over V. We have D and V must be in the same dimension. So we use 45 divided by three, we have the time, 15 seconds. That means the boat must take less or the maximum 15 seconds to, to go to the other side. If the boat takes more than 15 seconds, the boat will get to the waterfall, will be right in the middle of the waterfall. So we know the time is 15 seconds, and we know the distance is 100 meters. Vx equals dx over t, we have 6.7 meters per second. So that is the minimum speed that the boat must travel. If anything boat is travel less than this speed, the boat will be right in the middle, middle of a waterfall. Another question. So a pilot wishes to fly north. From the Bendair Airport to the Dandad Airport, the wind is blowing out of southwest. Southwest is in this direction, right? At 30 miles per hour. The small plane's average of velocity of 180 miles per hour. What heading should a pilot take? So use the sketch to help to solve this problem. So we know the resultant has to be due north. That's a resultant. We know one of the vectors is southwest, is in this direction, which is the speed is 30 miles per hour. So the boat speed has to be in this direction, right? V water, V, v of wind plus V of the plane, this is tip to tail, give us the resultant. So the answer is A in this case. A last example. So in the diagram below, a top view of a river is shown. A boat starts on the west side, left side. So you see the starting point over here of the river and has a variety of directions to get to the other side. The river flows south. The river flows downward. Match the boat heading and the boat speed to the indicated destination. So if the boat is going straight, so if the boat is going straight and river is going down, so the boat is going to arrive at C, D, or E. So which point it's going to get depends on boat speed. The faster the boat is, the, small, the smaller time it will take. So the less time it will take. So the distance downstream will be smaller. So here's 20 miles per hour, that's the fastest speed. In this case, the boat will get to C. In 14 miles per hour, the boat will get to D. Then the last one, seven miles per hour will take the longest. So the boat will going down, down more. So the boat will be E. Next one, consider both going in that direction, going kind of upward direction again, where it's going to land depends on the speed of the boat. The bigger the speed, the less distance, less vertical distance will travel because the less time it will have to go across. So at 12 miles per hour, it's probably going to end up at B because this going up plus down will give you like a horizontal direction. Now, on the other hand, with seven miles per hour, the boat will be ended with A. So these are the answers. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.